Okay, let me just finish off the story about the Yukon. The company at the time was um, was not very nice to us, and um, in 1952 is when the uh, town was actually founded. So we came in, I came in at the very beginning, and times were rough. Uh, the company was a bit rough, and uh, they completely changed. From all I've heard, the company became a very decent company, treated their people very well, and uh, did a tremendous job. So um, I can't uh, say that I've had that experience, but I know for, for a fact that that's true. In 1992, however, um, the um, interest in asbestos uh, w waned, and uh, the company was no longer profitable, and decided to close down the town. The town had um, become a, um, a fairly substantial town in this area, 1,500 inhabitants, uh, school, church, um, sports facilities, um, the whole ball of wax all disappeared in one day at the end of October in 1992. So after 40 years, the town disappeared, and it has become a ghost town since then, as so many other Canadian towns. Um, so that's, that's kind of a sad story. The uh, reason why we were let go so easily was that they decided in 1950, uh, was it the end of 52 or 53 when I left, uh, that um, it wasn't uh, going to be healthy to run trucks up and down the mountain. They would rather build a tram line. So that had already been decided after the second accident, and they knew there were going to be more. Uh, they just decided to abandon the whole project as far as that goes and put the tram line in place. When the auction, the town was actually auctioned off back in uh, '92, somebody bought the tram line for a lot of money, but never bothered to pick it up. <laughs> so it's still there today, believe it or not. So uh, that is the story of the Yukon, and it ends early, uh, first of all on a fairly upbeat um, uh, note, and then later on it's a sad story that uh, the town folded. Now I would like to tell you, and I've been asked by a lot of people to do this to tell you a little about the, the trip I took, the four weeks that I took off. So you won't see me now, but uh, you will hear me, and you will see a little presentation. <coughs> I'll try to make it a little more interesting and give you the presentation from the standpoint of a tour guide and uh, with a little uh, episodes here and there, some of them rather gruesome. And uh, at the end of any one of my episodes from now on, I'd like to uh, end the story with a, with a joke with a nice little joke story. So we'll go from there and we'll see how it works. Maybe it'll become a little more interesting for you. So for now, we'll leave it at that. Okay, here goes. We um, traveled to uh, Munich, flew to Munich, no problem. Uh, took a train, uh, went into the Black Forest. Little hick town, you wouldn't know it, you wouldn't find it if you knew it, you wouldn't find it on a map. Um, you had a your German has to be pretty good in order to be able to get by because people down there don't speak uh, English very much and it's um, a tourist country but um, the real American tourists aren't going there. These are the local German tourists. Um, so um, when we got to the um, guest house which we had found on the internet we found out that instead of having a room we got a whole suite which means a bathroom, a living room, a bedroom, and a little balcony. <clears throat> so that was perfect. Um, breakfast was included. It was only 42 euros a night, which is something like 50 bucks a night. Pretty de damn decent, and we were very happy with that setup. Um, the, uh, the town itself uh, was interesting because uh, there were enormously good restaurants. There were very good cooks. They were famous in all of Germany, and so um, meals were great. Uh, the ambiance in those restaurants was outstanding. All the waitresses in their long skirts and black usually, and uh, extremely friendly, good service, all linen tablecloths, of course, uh, porcelain uh, cups and uh, saucers and all of that stuff. So that was fine. The nearest town was about uh, 20 miles away, but uh, when you become a guest in this area, you get a guest card. And the guest card entitles you to free trips on trains and buses within 20 miles or so. It was just absolutely fabulous. The trains were on time. I will show you a picture a little later. And they um, were 
brand new, they looked brand new, there were electric trains, they were quiet, and uh, every half hour or so, so you see here comes a picture of the train. It was a real nice train. Now, by the way, the, the situation with railways in uh, Europe is a little unusual. You buy your, if, if you're not a guest, mind you, uh, we didn't pay anything, but if you're not a guest, you have to pay your ticket at a vending machine at the railway station, and then you go onto the train, and in every car there is a validation box. And you have to put your ticket in the validation box to get it validated. If you get caught with a ticket with no validation on it, it's the same as getting caught without a ticket. And the fine is 40 euros. It's pretty steep. But in the uh, two weeks that we were in the Black Forest, we haven't been checked once. The checkers are normally people that look like every, everybody else. They look like average people, jeans and whatnot and um, they go into a car there's usually three of them they go into each of the cars stand against the validation machine and check everyone for a ticket now if there is one without a ticket that's a costly proposition if you do it once 40 bucks next time i don't know it might be more uh, that was the part of that now the other the second picture in the beginning i wanted to tell you was merely the view from our window the next thing I want to tell you is about the Freudenstadt. Freudenstadt was the, the biggest attraction. There was a lot of shopping, a very attractive city with a lot of uh, museums and all sorts of other things, very interesting. And from Freudenstadt, we took several coach trips, one of them to Switzerland and to the Bodensee, which is a beautiful area owned by a Swedish royal couple. And so it's, an, it's a... Um, an actually uh, Swedish property and I will show you pictures of that that and then our bus you will see that as well the tour bus or the coach very elegant and very snazzy I'll show you some pictures of the um, Bodensee Island which is called uh, Mainau and then we took a short trip to Switzerland and um, back to into Germany this little plank is interesting because it shows in, it's in German, unfortunately, but uh, translated, it means that Allied bombers, by mistake, bombed this uh, Swiss town, Stein am Rhein, and destroyed uh, a great deal of it, including the, uh, the gate that you just saw. And <laughs> it was interesting to, to note that that happened, too. Uh, in uh, Stein am Rhein, which is a beautiful little city, and I'll show you a little bit of it, uh, we uh, stopped and got some French crepes. Uh, these are pancakes, you know, very thin pancakes. You're probably familiar with them. And um, we enjoyed that town a great deal. Then when we got back to, uh, um, to our Black Forest um, abode, we decided to take another trip. And that trip went, uh, we, went to uh, we went to Strasbourg. But uh, I think I'll save that for another time. Uh, the pictures are a little um, uncoordinated here, so I do need to do a little work on that. So forgive me if it's not perfect, but um, for now, let me just uh, close with this. And I'd like to read you a little story about a frog, and this might uh, get you a couple of chuckles. A man and his wife uh, drive along the road and, and uh, they hit a frog on the side of the road. The man gets out and picks up the frog. The frog looks at him and says, You're a kind person and I will grant you one wish and I'll try to make it come true for you. The man thinks about it and then he says, Frog, my dog died and I really love that dog. Can you make it come alive? The frog replied, That shouldn't be a problem. Where is the dog? Oh, it's in the trunk, the man replied frog opened the trunk and said, How long has the dog been dead? The man answered, About two weeks. The frog shook his head and said, You know, man, uh, that's really asking too much. Can't you come up with another wish? All right, said the man. My wife is sitting in the passenger seat up front. She used to be very pretty, but she no longer has her looks. Could you make her look beautiful? No problem, said the frog, and he went to open the passenger door. Then he immediately slammed the door shut again and said, and said, why don't you let me have another look at that dog? <laughs>